Welcome to Conversations. I'm your host, Charles Kirkland Jr. And today I have with me one of the premier documentary, documentary filmmakers working today. Uh, he's done feature length films that com combine compelling narratives with reach and dip, deeply researched historical detail. Uh, he's had several honors for films, including uh, works for uh, awards in uh, almost every area of the industry. He's a MacArthur Genius Fellow and was awarded an individual Peabody Award. In 2016, he got a Lifetime Achievement Award from the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences and has received the National Medal of in Humanities from President Barack Obama. So today I'm very pleased to have with me uh, a, a person who's just released a brand new film uh, called Attica. And if you don't know what that is, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. I have the great filmmaker, Stanley Nelson. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you so much. It's great to be on. Uh, I, we, we did this a second ago, but if for any reason why someone should not know what Attica is, um, and especially since it was such a seminal moment in corrections history from the 1970s and we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of that uh, prison massacre. Um, what made you decide to make a film about this? Um, you know, I had always been interested in, in making a film about Attica. Um, uh, and it, I started thinking about the fact that 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 the guys, you know, uh, who were in the yard, the prisoners and, and others, were really getting old, you know, and, and starting to get older. Um, so when we interviewed them, you know, they were, I guess, 70, around 70, you know, in general, and they were still great. I mean, they were still vibrant and, and tell great stories and have great memories. But if I, if I waited another 10, 15 years, you know, those people who are 70 are going to be 80 or 85 if we're lucky to still catch them. So I thought that, you know, now was the last best chance uh, to make this movie. So just, I mean... I, I work in, I've worked 20 years in the corrections industry before, uh, before starting off as a movie critic. So uh, I know a lot about Attica and what happened there. And it was um, trained. It was a, a point of training for me when I went into the corrections industry. Uh, but in your film, I know that you spend a lot of time talking to the the survivors and the incidents there of vibe. But how come you didn't talk at all about what what kind of reforms or if there were any reforms after Attica occurred? Um, we felt that 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 the film really ended the story for us. Really ended at the yard at the massacre, um, and that um, that uh, you know um, you're you're so emotionally devastated by, by that, that, that we can't spend a lot of time, you know, talking about uh, what occurred and what, what didn't occur afterwards. Um, and, and I think that, that, that also, you know, if it, it would be, if it was simple to say, you know, um, the reforms that occurred or, and what, or whether they were successful or not, you know, maybe we could have done that, but I don't think it's simple. You know, I think that, you know, um, in, so, in, in some places there were reforms for a little while and then their reforms went away. You know, um, in some places there were reforms and they stuck, maybe, you know, that that, that all has to be balanced uh, against the fact that, that, that there's two million people in prison, you know, in this country, over two million people. So that, you know, um, you could say, oh, you know, the, during the part of the reason why the Attica prisoners rebelled was because they only got one roll of toilet paper a month, you know, and, and, and that's not doable. You know, um, you could say, okay, well, after Attica, they got two rolls of toilet paper or they got as much toilet paper as, as they wanted. But if you say that, then you also have to say, yeah, but, you know, the prison population has increased, uh, you know, somewhere, I, I don't know, tenfold since, since, yeah. since since 71. Um, so we really felt that, you know, um, if you see the film, um, you know, you're, you're really emotionally strung out by the end um, and what happens at the end. And that really, um, that's, that's the end of our story as, as, 
as we're telling it, unless we were gonna, you know, go on for another hour or two and make it a mini series. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because um, I think the the stories that you got that you put in the film are very powerful, very and very telling. And w w were there any of them that were just hard to obtain in, or film or sit through as you were make, making these recordings? I mean, I, I think that, that that the first thing that, that well, we should say is that is that the, the film was totally made during the time of COVID, you know, so that we were we were scheduled to start uh, shooting in April and, you know, COVID hit really disastrously, I think, in March. So, you know, we had to postpone the shooting and, and then we had to try to figure out how to shoot because we knew that we didn't want the film to look, you know, like um, like it was shot during the time of COVID. You know, we didn't want people to be wearing masks. We didn't want to, you know, send people, a, you know, a ring light, a little camera and tell them to light themselves. You know, <laughs> or, you know, or if you do that, then it ends up looking like I do today, you know, <laughs> but, but we wanted it to look, you know, like it was shot, you know, any time by a professional camera person because, um, you know, the, the film it will, will, will be a testament, you know, um, and it will last for, in, in time, or at least we hope it, hope it will. And so, um, you know, all of that, that made it, made it really more, more difficult. Uh, plus the film relies on this incredible stock footage and stock pictures that we have. Um, and, you know, the, the stock houses were closed. I mean, they were like, just closed, you know, um, we're closed and we don't know when we're opening, you know, and, and um, we had to, you know, really just maneuver and, and wait until we could get you know, the footage uh, that, that we want that you see in the film. And, you know, I, I you know, the, the footage, we always think about the footage as another character. Um, yeah. But I think that the footage in this film is just, you know, um, is, is, is just, you know, amazing, you know, in, in, in so many ways. Um, one of the things that the inmates did when they first took over in the first, you know, day is they said they wanted the uh, television cameras to come in and to film everything because um, they thought that that would give them some kind of protection, you know, if they were if, if everything was being filmed, um, so that there's incredible uh, footage of every phase of the rebellion. Very, very detailed footage, very graphic footage at times, um, I, which leads me to the, my next question, which is. If Attica were to happen, say, in 2021, how do you think the media would, because the media is so integral in what happened at that time, how do you think the media would portray it differently if it were happening in 2021? Well, I mean, I think, I think in some ways, you know, one, the media is, is, is more sophisticated, you know, now, so that I think it's Harry Reasoner at, at after the rebellion, you know, he says, you know, Attica, which was led mostly by blacks, was the main blah, blah, blah. You know, and you're, and you're like, what? You know, <laughs> why, did he, why did he say that? You know, um, but but I also think that that one of the things that happened is that, you know, Attica was 250 miles from from, from New York, right? Um, the, the, the camera people were shooting on film. So, so basically the camera people you know, were left on their own to, to shoot as much as they could. And then the film had to be flown back to New York and, and processed and then would make it onto the air. Um, and so, um, you know, you, you give, you, you take a camera person and, and, and take him, you know, 250 miles from his home and you give him a whole bunch of film. Well, they're going to start filming and they just you know, filmed everything and they just filmed, you know, outside the prison and, and the hostage family's waiting and the hostage family's crying and, the, and, 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 and inside the prison, the, the, the inmates, you know, setting up tents and giving out food and, and, and electing leaders and, and, you know, the whole thing was, was filmed and I think that partially that was because you know it wasn't beamed it wasn't like you know one short report that you beam back to the station and you put on you know in two minutes it was like you know we got to film everything because we don't know what, <laughs> what, what we're going to use or, or, what, or what we're going to do um, and so that that uh, you know once we once we started to get hold of the footage we realized that that you know it was just like a lot and incredible, uh, you know, that, that, that it visually tells the story right. of, of the Attica Rebellion in a, in a way that, you know, um, 
uh, you know, nobody's ever seen before because one, Attica is the, is the biggest prison rebellion in the country. You know, there's a thousand guys who take over the prison. They, they held the prison for five days. You know, 40 people are killed. So it's, a, it's the most deadly, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, prison rebellion in, in, in the hist history of the country. Um, and, and um, you know, it, we see all of that and, and we see all of that and, and, we, and we feel it viscerally because, you know, we can tell the story uh, through, through pictures and, and through the people who were there, um, you know, who, you know, got shot or got gassed or, or yeah. you know, tried to negotiate it to a peace, a peaceful solution. Um, you know, we see, we, we see all those people and, and, and we talk to them and, and we're able to really tell uh, like a 360 degree story. Yeah. And, and and the great thing about the stories, each one, everybody has their own perspective, but there are certain perspectives that are generally uh, accepted by all. Like we had no weapons, or or uh, you know those things that make make it so powerful that um, I, I really I really appreciated that the perspective that you put on it to make it. I mean. Because a lot of times people see the see them as prisoners as less than human, and that was the the problem with Attica at the time, that they that they didn't consider them as people, and so now you get all these people telling these stories, and er everybody's story comes together in such a beautiful way. I have really appreciated this film. Yeah, one of the things that that, that we do over and over again is, is we have we have people kind of tell you the same story or, or, you know, one guy starts and the other guy finishes. So there's a section where the helicopters fly over in the retaking and they say, um, you know, um, come out with your hands on top of your head. You will not be harmed. You will not be harmed. Yeah. Not be, and then we have somebody else. You will not be harmed. You will not be harmed. You will not be harmed. And we have like five people saying the same thing because that's what the helicopter said over and over again. And we didn't we didn't think about that sequence, you know, plan that, you know, when we were planning the film. You know, we just talked, we had them talk about what they remembered. And when we were looking at the footage in the edit room, we, you know, everybody said the same thing, exact same thing that the helicopter said, come out, put your hands on your head, you will not be harmed. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and actually in, in the footage that was shot, you know, by the TV cameras and stuff, you, you see the helicopter and you hear the helicopter saying, come out, put your head with your hands on, on top of your head, you will not be harmed. And in the whole time that, that the assault is taking place and the 40 people are being killed, the helicopter is still above them saying, you will not be harmed, you will not be harmed, you will not be harmed, you will not be harmed. Not be harmed. Um, and, and, and part of that reason it sounds crazy is is the helicopter knew they weren't threatened because the because everybody knew that the inmates didn't have any weapons you know the inmates were not armed they they, they did not have any weapons they had sticks and pipes and stuff um and, and you know they they were just murdered whatever they could fashion is what they had and yeah the, they had no way to retaliate or i mean and it was clear it was clear and also, you know, just to get the full picture, you know, the, the law enforcement is up on these catwalks and the prisoners are down, you know, in the yard. So they're just like firing you know, down, you know, through this gas. They can't even see the prisoners at this point because they've, they've, they've shot gas down from the helicopter. And so now they're just firing in, in, into the smoke and just, you know, wantonly shooting people and killing people. And that's how... Uh, uh the prison guards got killed as well. Then nobody, you couldn't see what was going on. They're just randomly shooting and, and just killing everybody they could. So it, it's a terrible tale. But nonetheless, one that needs to be told for, I guess, a generation of children, and, uh, adults who have no idea what Attica is other than a catchphrase in a movie here or there. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, it, it, it's shocking because, you know, I mean, I was I was around that I was you know, 20 years old, maybe. Um, but and, and it was such a, a, a seminal event. Um, but we, as we started, you know, um, on the film and we started finishing the film, we started talking to people and, and um, we found that, that, you know, a good, you know, third or half of the audiences that, 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 that we're playing to, you know, don't know anything about it. You know, we'd ask the audience before the film, I mean, do you know anything? Do you know what Attica is? You know, and maybe half the people, the people would be like, no, I, I have no idea what Attica is, you know. Um, uh, 
and, and, and you know, and what's going to happen. You know, uh, one of the things that we showed it uh, to my nephew and his girlfriend, and she said, yeah, you know, I, I, I really love the film. And, but, it, but it, and I love the twist in the middle. We were like, twist? <laughs> what are you about? She said, I thought the prisoners were going to win. You know, I thought the wow. prisoners were going to win. I thought that they were, they were going to negotiate it to, to a peaceful settlement. Now, I'm kind of giving away the, the, the film for people who don't, who don't see it. But, but, you know, one of the concerns and one of the things that we wanted to do was make a film for, you know, if you don't know anything about Attica, you know, it, it's just a thrill ride. And if you do know something about Attica, or, you know, or you think you know a lot about Attica, no, you don't. I, you know, that, 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 you know, how we got there, you know, is, 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 is really what we're talking about. You know, I call it like the Citizen Kane moment. You know, if you see the film Citizen Kane, right? They tell you in the beginning, like how they, he's dead. They yeah. tell you in the beginning <laughs> how he dies. Then they show a newsreel and show his whole life again. And then, they, you know, <laughs> you know, then they go back and then you go back through the film and, and, and no, you know, you don't, you don't really know kind of what, what happened. And so that's, you know, what, what we're trying to do in the film is you think, you know, um, but, you know, it's still a thrill ride. You know, I mean, we wanted to tell the, tell the story as a thriller, you know, that's why we go through kind of, you know, the day, day one, day two, day three, you know, mm -hmm. because every day changed, every day, the mood changed, every day, what they wanted to change every day, you know, you know, from exuberance to despair to, you know, um, uh, just trying, you know, trying to, to to hold off this massacre that that they know is coming, and and they're they're trapped inside, and there's nothing that they can do to hold it off. I I wanted to congratulate you because I, as I started in the beginning of this interview, I said that you know I've worked in corrections for uh, twenty years, and even having all that ex training and experience. There were a lot of things that you revealed to me in this film that I even w was unaware of uh, about the, the whole story. And so it, it's informative, it's uh, instructional, it's, uh, like you said, it's a thrill ride, uh, a, a an unnerving dive into what happened in 1971. And I just, I thank you for making such a wonderful film. Well, thank you so much. Um... You know, I mean, I, I can't say exactly it was a pleasure, you know, because that sounds really wrong, but, but it was a real honor. It was a real honor to make this film. Thank you. All right. So for uh, those of you who want to watch Attica, it's now playing on Showtime. You can check it out. I definitely suggest you check it out. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for being with me today. And Thank congratulations you. again on a wonderful film. Thank you. Thank you. All right.